anything else that you'd like to add, any thoughts? Um, we are not going to have a Q&A session until the afternoon, so I open it up to any one of the four of you to add any final thoughts or suggestions before we take a break. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention that I would like to mention is that most of the time when we're talking about standards that are incorporated by reference, these are, I think, as you, these, this discussion shows, highly technical materials. Um, I, I personally have read or more accurately tried to read um, a number of these standards, and without fairly significant scientific or technical background, they're very difficult to parse. Um, so one of the provisions of our recommendation, it's paragraph five, tells agencies that when they're incorporating something by reference that's highly technical, they need to explain to the public what it does and how it relates to the regulatory purpose that's in the regulation. And I think that this sometimes gets lost in the discussion of uh, improving public access to the law, um, but it's incredibly important. Just making a copy of the standard available for free is not necessarily enough to give members of the public sufficient information to comment meaningfully on a standard or to understand what the regulation actually requires of them. Um, and, and I think that that is just something that's sort of important to keep in mind, both in terms of you know, the nature of the materials we're talking about and also what our obligations to the public really constitute. I would support that. That's a uh, very strong point. Uh, also, a couple of other no, it's just to keep in, in uh, consideration in terms of the broader context. Um, uh, as Emily mentioned, there are, are approximately 9,500, a little bit more, um, standards incorporated by reference currently in the Code of Federal Regulations. Um, about 4,000 of those are, non, are pri voluntary consensus standards from a variety of different sources, some of the ones that uh, the uh, DOT uh, folks noted. Um, and many of those references are multiple references to the same document, in some cases by a variety of agencies. Um, the ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code is a very good example. It is referenced by a substantial number of agencies. It, it is relevant to a wide variety of regulatory missions. So if you parse down the number of individual references to unique standards, it's running a voluntary consensus standard, running a little under 3,000 unique references. Um, in that context, attention also needs to be paid, and I, I laud, uh, give DOT a lot of credit in this area, by agencies to updating or replacing reference standards so that they are consistent with current practice wherever feasible. We have a number of outdated references, references to outdated standards incorporated in the Code of Federal Regulations. DOT is very good about keeping up with uh, current uh, industry practice, but a lot, some of the benefits of referencing voluntary uh, consensus standards in regulation uh, in terms of bene benefiting the regulated community by reducing costs may be lost if you have outdated references. Okay, that's one point. And we also, also should consider doing more to ensure that agencies have enough public have the understanding of the overall resources and costs that would be involved if federal agencies were to develop a government unique standards in lieu of relying on uh, technical standards that are developed by voluntary consensus bodies. So I just wanted to add those two points. I would add one comment. Uh, related to the technical focus of our standards, I can't speak to standards at large, but they are highly technical. And the technology evolves very quickly. Uh, we have a R&D conference that's coming up next week to look at new technologies and how we move safety forward through advancing technology. And oftentimes, that technology moves faster than we can readily develop internal uh, requirements. So a lot of times, we will look to standard-setting organizations to keep pace with that technology, and we will participate and work with them and incorporate it. One of the challenges that we would need to consider um, is how to make that information readily available, um, how we can how we can make sure our outcome and compliance with the act requirement keeps us current with technology and does not limit technology because we want to keep safety moving forward. And just to actually not hear me think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, this is another issue that I didn't spend a lot of time talking about because it's not really what FIMSA is, I think, grappling with uh, in this workshop. But that is another issue that, that our recommendation also deals with extensively. Um, because agencies are, for, for several reasons, required to identify the precise version and year or edition of the standard that they're using. Mm -hmm. So when standards get out of date, agencies have to go through rulemaking to update 
their regulations to reflect new versions of the standards. And participation in, uh, in voluntary consensus processes is one way for agencies to you know, make that process easier. Um, it's one of the provisions of our recommendation, actually. Um, but there are several other things that we identify that agencies can do. And it's also, I mean, it's part of the problem, I think, here with FEMSA, because they need to update their regulations, and now they're laboring under, under a, new, a new requirement that changes how they can do that. So um, if you're interested in those issues and also in more technical uh, drafting issues, including the, the, the difficulties that are raised by secondary references, I would encourage you to look at uh, the materials that the administrative conference has produced on this subject. And I'd also like to ask uh, Mary or Emily or both of you, um, you know, how, how can the government accommodate Section 508 requirements in this area? Um, do the standards that you've encountered, uh, do they include a lot of schematics, technical drawings? Um, because we do have an obligation to make sure that information that we post free of charge on the Internet is, is accessible to people with disabilities. That's correct. That is a requirement for federal agencies. Um, it, it, it varies widely. I mentioned, the, and Emily did too, the wide variety of types of documents that are incorporated by reference. I, I, I think, not having delved deeply into the pipeline and safety um, reference standards, but I'm, I'm reasonably confident that those are highly technical. Um, in, in other areas, particularly regulatory, um, for in the regulatory space across the federal um, government, um, test methods will have extensive, can have extensive schematics. Um, we're talking about documents that are, are highly technical and will have um, um, calculations, equations, uh, uh, tables, um, specific directions on using particular types of instruments for particular types of measurements. There are a wide variety of very technical information. Yeah. I, I don't actually have anything to add. I, that's not an issue that I've specifically looked at. Um, so I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to say anything that would be wrong, um, but I, it's absolutely true that the, the variety is huge. And if you're going to be, if the agency itself is going to be responsible for putting these materials online, then that's something they're going to have to deal with. I mean, sometimes standard developers are the ones who are putting the materials on their own websites for free in an electronic form. I'm not sure what the obligations would be there when it's the private party rather than an agency, but it's certainly an issue that will have to be addressed as we move forward. Thank you. And Jeannie, that the point. For all of you who are listening on the webcast and anyone today, that might be something that we should chat about or add to the afternoon session. So to the extent anybody else has thought about that or has some thoughts on how to make sure these documents could be 508 compliant if posted, um, we welcome your feedback this afternoon when we get into the working session. So with that, we are going to take a five-minute break uh, to switch out the panels. Um, so that gives us please return at 9.05.